Welcome to this YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to talk about top 10 facts about Iran-Pakistan relations. So before starting this video, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for our future updates. The bilateral ties between Iran and Pakistan are referred to as Iran-Pakistan relations. Iran was one of the first countries to accept Pakistan's sovereign status, after it achieved independence in August 1947. In the 1980s, sectarian tensions strained relations between Shia-majority Iran and Sunni-majority Pakistan, as Pakistani Shia Muslims believed they were discriminated against by the military dictatorship government of then-President General Muhammad Zia ul Haq, which enforced a Sunni-biased Islamization program across the region. Here are the 10 facts about Iran-Pakistan relationship. Number 10. Despite this, both countries continue to cooperate economically, where possible and are forging partnerships in a number of areas of mutual interest, such as combating the drug trade along their border and the insurgency in the Balochistan region. Iran has expressed interest in participating in China's Belt and Road Initiative's China-Pakistan Economic Corridor CPEC. According to Pew Research Center surveys, Pakistan is one of the few countries where Iranian influence is favorably received. Polls consistently show that a large majority of Pakistanis have a favorable opinion of their western neighbor. Ayatollah Khamenei, Iran's supreme leader, has also appealed for sympathy, assistance, and cooperation from all Muslim countries, including Pakistan diplomatic relations between the two countries have recently strengthened, as a result of Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan's policies, which aim to strengthen Pakistan's ties with Iran. He's also offered to act as a mediator in the current proxy war between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Number 9. Since Pakistan straddles an intermediate zone between the Iranian plateau and the Indian subcontinent, the regions that make up today's Iran and Pakistan have been governed by contiguous Eurasian polities at different times in history. During the reign of Darius I, the Persian Achaemenid Empire invaded the regions, comprising modern-day Balochistan, Sindh, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, and western Punjab, which spanned, among other regions, the territory between the Balkans and the area of the Indus River, known to the Persians as Hend. During the Cold War, Imperial Iran maintained strong relations with Pakistan, owing to their shared alliance with the US-led Western Bloc. Iran was the first country to recognize Pakistan as a sovereign nation, and Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi was the first head of state to visit Pakistan on an official state visit in March 1950. Since 1947, Pakistan's founder, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, has successfully advocated for a policy of fostering cordial ties with the Muslim world, especially Iran. Number 8. 1972 meeting between Pakistani President Zulfikar Ali Bhutto and Iranian Queen Farah Pahlavi. Prime Minister Liaquat Ali Khan and Muhammad Reza Pahlavi concluded a friendship treaty in May 1950. Any of the Treaty of Friendship's provisions had broader strategic consequences. After the Indian government decided to help Egyptian President Gamal Abdel Nasser, who was attempting to export a pan-Arab philosophy that challenged many of the more conventional Arab monarchies, including those that were allied with the Shah of Iran, Pakistan found a natural partner in Iran. Iran was a natural ally and model for Pakistan for other reasons, according to Harsh V. Pant, a foreign policy scholar. Both countries granted each other MFN status for trade purposes, the Shah generously provided Pakistani oil and gas, and the Iranian and Pakistani militaries worked together extensively to suppress the Balakistan rebel movement. Iran and Pakistan were closer in many areas during the Shah's reign. Pakistan, Iran, and Turkey joined the Central Treaty Body, which was supported by the US and extended a protective alliance along the Soviet Union's southern frontier. Iran was a major player in the 1965 Indo-Pakistani War, supplying Pakistan with nurses, medical supplies, and a 5,000-ton gift of petroleum. Iran has also stated that it is considering imposing an oil embargo on India for the duration of the war. The Indian government was convinced that Iran had blatantly favored Pakistan during the war and was attempting to weaken India. Iran was claimed to have purchased 90 F-86 Sabrejet fighter planes from West Germany, and delivered them to Pakistan following the suspension of American military assistance to Pakistan. Number 7. Despite the fact that Pakistan's decision to join the Central Treaty Organization, CENTO, in 1955 was primarily motivated by security worries about India, Pakistan did not sign until Iran was satisfied that the British government would not hinder the nationalization of British oil companies in Iran. 
Dr. Mujtaba Razvi believes Pakistan would not have joined CENTO if Iran had suffered a setback as a result of these events in the Indo-Pakistani War of 1971, Iran once again played a crucial role for Pakistan, this time providing military equipment as well as diplomatic support against India. In an interview with a Parisian newspaper, the Shah publicly admitted that we are 100% behind Pakistan, describing the Indian attack as blatant violence and intervention in Pakistan's domestic internal affairs. Amir Abbas Hoveyda, the Iranian prime minister, agreed, saying, Pakistan has been subjected to aggression and force. The Iranian leadership has repeatedly expressed its opposition to Pakistan's dismemberment, fearing that it will jeopardize Iran's domestic stability and security by inciting Kurdish and Baloch separatists to rebel against the Iranian government. In a similar way, Iran tried to justify its weapons sales to Pakistan by claiming that, in its desperation, Pakistan would fall into the hands of the Chinese, a communist rival to the US-led Western Bloc. Number 6. Following Pakistan's disintegration in December 1971, Iran realized that protecting the security and territorial integrity of its eastern flank would require extraordinary effort. With the creation of Bangladesh as a separate state, the two-nation theory Pakistan movement as well as the state of Pakistan had suffered a significant setback and concerns arose in the Iranian establishment as to whether the remaining western part of Pakistan could hold together and remain a single entity. The events of this period triggered major shifts in Tehran's views of Pakistan. When a widespread armed uprising erupted in Pakistan's Balochistan province in 1973, Iran provided large-scale assistance, fearing that the insurgency would spread to its own Sistan and Balochistan province. Pakistan obtained military hardware from Iran, including 30 R-1 Cobra attack helicopters, as well as intelligence and $200 million in funding. The government of then Pakistani Prime Minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto announced that, as in the 1971 Bangladesh Liberation War, India was behind the unrest and rebel rebellion in Balochistan. The Indian government, on the other hand, denied any involvement, claiming that it was concerned about further balkanization of the subcontinent. The rebellion was largely suppressed after three years of war. Number 5. Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the founder of Pakistan, is depicted on an Iranian postage stamp from 1976 in addition to military assistance, the Shah of Iran provided significant developmental assistance to Pakistan, including preferential oil and gas prices. Pakistan was a developing country with limited power, while Iran had the world's fifth largest military, a powerful economic industrial base, and was the undisputed regional powerhouse in the 1960s and 1970s. Iran's complete reliance on the US for economic growth and military build-up at the time, however, had earned it hostility from the more Soviet-aligned Arab world. Short-lived tensions between Iran and Pakistan erupted in 1974, when Mohammad Reza Pahlavi declined to attend the Islamic Conference in Lahore, because Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi had been invited despite their recognized animosity. Iran later played a critical and powerful role in 1976 by fostering a reconciliation between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Number 4. The Iranian response to India's surprise, nuclear test detonation, codenamed Smiling Buddha, in 1974 was subdued. During a state visit to Iran in 1977, Pakistani Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto attempted to convince Pahlavi to support Pakistan's secret nuclear weapons program. Although the Shah's response is unknown, there are signs that he did not agree to Bhutto's demands following political unrest by an opposition coalition, Bhutto was deposed in a military coup d'etat in July 1977. In comparison to the more democratic Iran at the time, the new military dictatorship regime, led by General Mohammad Zia al Haq, was ideologically ultra-conservative and religiously focused in nature and approach. Number 3. Relationship after the Iranian Revolution of 1979. Progressive Iranian-Pakistani relations deteriorated after the 1979 Iranian Revolution, rather than thriving as they had done during the Shah's reign. The Iranian Revolution and eventual overthrow of the Shah of Iran followed Bhutto's demise a half year later. Rahola Khomeini, the supreme leader of the newly formed Islamic Republic of Iran, removed the country from Cento and violently ended its relationship with the US. The religiously inspired military regime of Zia al Haq and Iran's Islamic Revolution were a good fit for each other, and there was no significant diplomatic or political schism between them. Pakistan was one of the world's first countries to recognize Iran's new revolutionary regime in 1979. 
Responding quickly to the revolution, Pakistani Foreign Minister Aga Shahi went on a state visit to Tehran, where he met with his Iranian counterpart Karim Sanjabi on March 10, 1979. Both shared hope that Iran and Pakistan will work together to create a better future. The next day, Aga Shahi held talks with Ayatollah Rahola Khomeini, during which they discussed regional developments. Number 2. Since 2000, relations between Iran and Pakistan have steered towards normalization and economic cooperation has strengthened. The September 11 attacks on the United States changed the foreign policy priorities of both countries. The George W. Bush administration's tough stance against terrorism following the attacks forced the then Pakistani president, General Pervez Musharraf, to support Washington's war on terror campaign against the Taliban in neighboring Afghanistan. The subsequent US-led coalition invasion would end the Taliban-controlled Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan regime. Though Iranian officials initially welcomed the invasion and deposition of the Taliban, they soon found themselves encircled by US forces in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Central Asia, and the Persian Gulf. Number 1. Since 1987, Pakistan has steadily blocked any Iranian acquisition of nuclear weapons. However, Pakistan has wholeheartedly supported Iran's viewpoint on the issue of its nuclear energy program, maintaining that Iran has the right to develop its nuclear program within the ambit of NPT. In 1987 Pakistan and Iran signed an agreement on civil nuclear energy cooperation, with Zia al haq personally visiting Iran as part of its Atoms for Peace program. What do you think of our list? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.